Well, greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A privilege to be here today to talk with you or preach to you or teach to you uh, about salvation. And uh, I want to give honor to Pastor Noel and want to give honor to all the ministry in this church. I want to give honor to all of you saints that are faithful to the house of the Lord. Amen. Jesus is coming. Be ready. We know not the hour or the time, but I do know one thing for sure. Jesus is going to come. So we got to be ready for the coming of the Lord, right? Amen. I'm going to take my scriptures from Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. And it says this, Then Peter said unto them, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you. Amen. Aren't you glad for the promise? The promise is the Holy Ghost. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. That's the promise. Amen. And it all goes on to say that it is for your children. Amen. So then it goes on to say, and to them that are far off. In other words, amen, those that are in the generations to come, those that are not here yet. So even, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. We find out that in the beginning of chapter 2, amen, it says that in the day of Pentecost, when they were all in one accord in one place, and there was a sound that came from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And they appeared and appeared unto them with cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. <coughs> These were people that were from a city that... Um, didn't even know other languages. These were people that were in a place, amen, that had no idea of any other kind of language. And it sounds to me kind of like Bloomington, if you want to look at it like that. We have people from all nationalities, all countries, and, and they may not all speak our language, but most of them do. And there were some men that were standing there, and they were listening to these people as they were, they were speaking in these languages, and some of them were from their country. It kind of confused them a little bit. The Bible says that they were confounded because, amen, they heard these people speaking their language and they could not understand what is going on here. Amen. And they asked the question, he says, what meaneth this? Amen. And so Peter said, he stands up with the 11 there and he, he's the bold one of the bunch. He's the one that, that has the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And he says, hey, let me tell you something about this. He said, these are people, amen, that have just received the gift of the Holy Ghost is what he was saying. Amen. He lifted up his voice and he said unto them, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Amen. He said, let you, I'm going to let you know that this is also what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. If you look back, he said, Joel says, In the last days, saith the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Peter was just letting them know, amen, that what that promise was that Joel said has come to pass on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Peter's still standing up there, still under, I'm going to say, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he began to tell them that you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, that you need to repent of your sins, that you need to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I, I, I sit and I thought today that, you know, we go through our daily plans and, <coughs> and we, we make plans for our future. We make plans for our days. And we wake up and we say, okay, well, I got to do this today. I got to do that today. I got to go here. Got to go there. And, and my wife, she'll say, hey, what is your plans for tomorrow? And, well, a lot of times I don't have a plan for tomorrow, but when you think about it, I really do. I'm going to get up and do what I have to do uh, on a daily basis, go out and feed my animals, whatever I got to do. But you, she asked me once in a while, she, what, what are you planning on doing tomorrow? And I will often say, I haven't thought that far ahead. Because I know what I need to do. That's just the plan for the day. But I really haven't always planned out my day for the rest of the day. But I will say this, in the back of my mind, 
in the back of what I, I want to do. I have a plan for the future. Amen. I have a plan that I may want to retire someday, and I hope I get there. But in doing so, I'm always thinking about maybe I need to have, you know, I got to have life insurance, I got to have health insurance, we got to do all of these things. Amen. So we're planning for our future. <coughs> but my question to you today is this. Amen. What about our eternal future? What about our eternal life? What about going on after this life? The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. Amen. We are only living in this world for just a moment, just a time, just a few minutes, a few, a few years. The Bible says that, you know what, we're all just here for a little while. There's a song that says, amen, in, I'm just a passing through. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Whether you're saved, whether you're not saved, this is just a moment of time for us. This world is not our home. It's not your home. But there is an eternal home that you can go to <coughs> and then you can make plans for. Amen. I always wonder, amen, sometimes I, I think, will I make it to retirement before Jesus comes? I hope I do. Some days. And some days I hope, Lord, come quickly. Lord, come quickly. I'm ready for the Lord to come some days. I just kind of enjoy what I do. I get up and do what I have to do. But in the back of my mind, I'm making eternal, eternal, eternal life. And you need to make eternal life yourself as a thought and a process and a plan. Because Jesus is going to come. Your goal, my goal, all of our goals should be that Jesus is going to come and that we need to be ready. If you're here and you're under my voice and you're, you're not ready for the coming of the Lord, I urge you, I plead with you, please be ready when Jesus comes. Amen. The Bible says, he, told, he said, listen, he said, go out into all the world. And he said, preach the gospel to every creature to every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He said, preach the gospel, <coughs> preach the good news. And that good news is Jesus has a salvation plan. Amen. We've got to be ready. Amen. You can have life insurance. You can have health insurance. You can have all kinds of insurances, plans for the future. But what about the eternal future? What about the salvation plan that will give you peace, that will give you joy, that will give you happiness, but most of all, this salvation will give you eternal life. It is the best eternal life insurance that you can even get. It's the best of any insurance that you can have. Amen. And the only way you can get that is to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're very adamant about that. We believe that. We understand that. And I urge you today, amen, do what you have to do to be ready when Jesus comes. We have no promise for tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring us. But I do know one thing. Jesus is going to come, and we must, we must, we must be ready. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. If you believe in God, believe also in me. <coughs> in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. He has went to a place to prepare for each and every one of us. And it is up to us on whether or not we obtain eternal life. It is up to us on whether or not you want the eternal life insurance that Jesus has offered to you and to me and to your children and to those in the generations to come. It is up to you on whether or not you want to live for God. It is up to you on whether or not you want to make heaven your home. Amen. After this life, Jesus is going to come. Amen. And we must be ready. He said, I have many mansions. Amen. And they are there. Amen. And I want, I, I guess I want a mansion. 
Amen. But I just want to be with Jesus. I don't want to be here in the end. I want to be with the Lord. He said, if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, Jesus said, believe in me. You have received, have you received the salvation plan? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you ready to see Jesus? Amen. If not, I urge you, the salvation plan has many benefits in this life's journey. It will bring you peace when nothing else can. It will bring you joy when nothing else can. It will bring you happiness and contentment, amen, when nothing else can. But most of all, this salvation plan has eternal life. That is the best part about this salvation that we have. It's eternal life, and it's for you, it's for me, it's for all. I urge you, amen, to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And when he looked up, he saw that there was streets of gold, walls of jasper, all kinds of jewels, all kinds of things, things that we can't even imagine in our own minds. This is what we're going to, we're going to receive. And I urge you today, be ready for the coming of the Lord. Jesus has the best eternal life insurance. And that is, we're going to go to heaven. Amen. I urge you to come, if you would, and come to Family Life Center and hear what we have to say and understand that we're here, amen, not just, not just preaching a gospel, but we're here to help you and to nurture you. We want you to be saved. I want to be saved. That's my goal. God bless you, amen, in Jesus' name. Bless you. Please come, amen.